Hi guys, welcome to the Archive. My name is Matt and this is part two of the Mountain Block System. Last week I showed you a ton of different ways you can use this system to make all kinds of caves and mountains, including this epic mountain fortress. Because it combines with modular pieces from the wall and temple system I've shown previously, as well as the many, many different modular accessories that I've shown in different videos. So if you haven't seen that, check it out in the link up there or in the description. I've also included the full gallery at the end of the video, except this time it won't have me babbling through it, it'll have some nice music instead. Had a look? Awesome. Let's get on with making the next bits. For the sloped blocks, I started with 3 inch cubes of XPS foam again, and you can check out the last video for some tips on cutting this stuff. I printed off the free template that is available to absolutely everyone on my Patreon page, and cut out the first bit that I needed. If it's been a while since this video was released, just use the search function on my feed or filter by downloads. I used this to draw a line onto each block, which I then cut off using my Proxon to cut an angled chunk out of each block. Getting this angle perfectly right doesn't matter too much. You could easily do this with a knife. It's more of a starting point for the carving and it preserves some nice offcuts of foam that we can use later. So don't throw those away. Well. Don't throw all of them away. You're probably gonna get way more than you actually need. I then cut out the template labeled convex. Basically, this is the bulging version that sticks out a bit. Concave is smaller and indented, like, well, well, like a cave. I used that second template to draw on a pattern on each side. When I made these templates originally, as shown here, I made them non-symmetrical, which was a horrible mistake because that made things way more complex for me. You don't need to worry about this when making yours though, because I have since edited that template to be a perfect mirror on each side, so it really doesn't matter which way around you use it. I then got to work with a knife to trim the piece to be an interesting angular starting shape that lines up at the edges with the lines that you drew with the template. As long as it does that, you can make the shapes as different as you want, bulging out in the middle or caving in, whatever shape you like really, as long as the lines at the edge match up. I did find it was a good idea to make bulging pieces quite rare, otherwise you end up with a bit of a lumpy mountain. In my testing here, spending ages getting a nice interesting pattern on these pieces was mostly wasted after the rock texturing stage. Honestly, you can save yourself some time and just cut a few decent depth chunks in places and let the rock texturing do the rest. I also used some fine grain sandpaper to smooth over any obvious knife cuts. Though if you're doing this, make sure the area is well ventilated and use a dust mask. The fumes when cutting XPS is mostly harmless. The particles when sanding are much less pleasant because they just sit in your lungs forever. Not fun. There's only one thing to be careful of here. To make sure the piece will line up with floor tiles in future, I made sure that on one side of each slope I didn't have the piece bulging out for about half an inch. You can check this is working by making a half inch thick 3 inch square test piece using the concave template to check that they slot in flush. You can even convert this test piece into a tile later once I release that video. I'll talk more about that in that video, it's the main reason to use a template and I have a lot more compatible tiles planned in the future. But if you don't have access to a printer, that's absolutely fine. As long as you make yourself a template, make sure it's symmetrical. You can do this by folding it over before you cut it and make sure you use the same templates every time. You can do all of this without any access to a printer whatsoever. If you do have access to a printer though, it makes it a lot quicker, a lot easier, and it's absolutely free. So go download that if you can. From there, I just textured the pieces with caveman technique on all sides using a textured rock and beating it with the foam to add that texture where I wanted it. Like I mentioned in the previous video, I found the best spots to use were heavily textured, but not too uneven, so they didn't gouge holes too deep. I rotated the block as I whacked to make sure that the texture looked varied. I did find that using some of the sharper edges to occasionally add slightly deeper lines and cracks in the texture made the surfaces again a little bit more varied and natural looking. And also, as I mentioned last time, you can add to the technique with wire brush stabbing if you want for a texture similar to the one that I showed for the caveman technique in my stone texture comparison video. I didn't, mainly to save some time. 
As I've said, I do feel it adds to the quality of the texture, but only by a small amount, and it is a fairly time-consuming process. If you think these ideas are cool, and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the bell to make sure you see my videos in future. For accessory slots, I made one flat side with nine slots, just like I did for the square piece in the previous video. But I made the other flat side with none, to be the floor when it's flipped upside down. It doesn't really matter which side is which, because the piece is invertible, so don't stress too much about it. I made these slots in four different directions by stabbing in a cocktail stick half an inch deep at a 45 degree angle after marking where to stab using the template. To allow corners to connect to it when upside down, I also made two slots in the sides, using the middle point on each of the flat edges from the template. You can use cracks here to disguise them too if you want to. Though, for the most part, they're not going to be that visible. I also made one slot in the sloped facing itself to allow placing vegetation, platforms to show climbing players or NPCs, or any other accessories that I had in future. I added these in a fairly random location to make it seem a bit more varied when you put these all together. For these side pieces, I made the accessory slots pointing up and down towards the flat edge with no holes in it whatsoever. That's basically the top and the bottom. But if this is confusing, you could just put them in four different directions again. It really doesn't matter that much. If the cocktail stick starts to feel resistance after a while of stabbing these in, don't push harder or you might end up messing up the foam internally. Just stop, sharpen the stick with a knife and continue from there. Or just start using a fresh cocktail stick. The corner blocks were very similar with some slight differences. Again, I started with some three inch cubes and use the straight corner template from the slope tiles again. This time though, I marked it on two sides that were next to each other to make a slope that rises into a corner and cut the chunks out with my Proxon. Again, you can absolutely do this with a knife. Next, I used that convex template again to draw in on both sloped sides. After that, I also used this template on the underside, the bit that's going to be the bottom. I had to be careful to get my non-symmetrical pattern to line up. You should have no such problems if you use my updated template. You lucky buggers. From there, I used my knife to cut a rough shape into the piece that lined up with the template lines. The shape doesn't really matter as long as it lines up with those template lines. You can make these as varied as you want, just like the other sloped pieces. And once you've got that, you can add texture again using the caveman technique, just like with the sloped piece. Finally, I chose two of the flat sides to be the connecting points, and one to be the floor when I hooked it on upside down, which I left blank. For the connecting sides, I added two accessory slots to each side, just as I did to the sides of the sloped pieces. Then we've got the angle cut square blocks, which were mainly designed to line up with corner slopes to make believable non 90 degree sloped corners, and to allow these corners to curve inwards believably. These can also be used as standard square blocks in any situation where the top won't be visible, so it's handy having a few. Optional, but handy. Alternatively, you can just not texture and paint the sides to save some time. These are mostly the same as a square block, cut from a 3 inch cube again, but this time with curved convex template used on three sides to line up one corner that we cut off, again making sure it's smooth with the template edges. 
Once that was cut, I just textured with the caveman technique again, this time on all sides. For the accessory slots, I added in the triangle of slots to the two sides opposite the slope, and didn't bother adding the nine point grid like I did with the main square blocks, because it really just isn't necessary on these pieces. You can add it if you wanted to use it as part of a cliff face or something like that, but I would be careful doing that because due to the nature of it not being a complete square, it's a little bit less stable. Could be good to use as a final top row though. The reason I added these triangles of slots to the two sides opposite the slope was to basically allow it to face different directions if you wanted to use it hanging from a cliff upside down as part of a larger outcropping. Finally, I made some quick rocky accessories by cutting chunks out of these spare chunks of foam and texturing them with the caveman technique, though I didn't end up having time to paint them, and honestly, I didn't really carve them as well as I could have either. You can use this method to add all kinds of small ledges and rocky outcroppings to a build like this, as well as make some rocky ledges to allow characters to climb the sloped pieces easily. All you need to connect them again is punching in a one inch cocktail stick into the back at a 45 degree angle and rounding off the ends. Basically an accessory slot like all the other accessories that I've shown in the past. Finally, I painted all of these in the exact same way as I showed in the video last week. So if you haven't already checked that out, go check that out. Anyway, if you find yourself needing any tools or supplies for these builds, check out my equipment list in the description. It includes links to everything I use, where to find it, and if you buy anything through the Amazon links there, it helps support the channel at no cost to yourself. And that includes anything you buy through those links, even if it's something non-crafty like a candle or a cuddly toy. As always, thank you so much to those of you who are supporting me on Patreon and helping me make these videos week on week. You are really helping me make this dream of mine come true. If you did want to support me in making more of these videos and making sure that I'm able to keep making them, there are some bonuses for patrons like early access to videos and some printable things that you can use to add to your crafts and save yourself a ton of time. That aside, as always, let me know what you think about this system or any ideas you've had about it yourself, especially if you've been thinking about this since last week. I'd love to hear what some of you guys have come up with. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back after a break next week to enable me to catch up on my day job and tidy the house because yeah, it's bad. Until then, I leave you with some nice music and a gallery of all the cool things you can do with this system, and I'll be in the archive.